Hi there and welcome back to videos on safeguarding genders, um, identities and sexualities. We're going to start off now giving you an opportunity to do some learning and to be able to share that with the rest of us. Now whenever I've done this session in classrooms or lecture halls um, it's been really easy because I've managed to split the group right down the middle. And I've asked people to go into small groups and to discuss a particular issue. But because you're doing this online and probably um, you're alone, then you're going to have to consider this from both sides, not just when I split groups into two and I get one group thinking of one thing and one group thinking of another. So you'll need to consider the whole lot in its entirety. But then you need to share that with others. So whether this means you're going to discuss it with colleagues that you're on your courses with or colleagues back at work. Um, if you're doing particular courses, um, especially at the University of Greenwich, then please feel free to talk to your colleagues on the courses about this and share your ideas online with them in your Moodle forum zones as well. But remember what I said right at the beginning, feel free to copy me in, uh, share your learning ideas uh, w with me, especially on Twitter. And if you want to use the, uh, the Twitter account for our sexual health students and graduates, they'd really appreciate sharing your learning with you too. OK, right. So this is what we're going to do. <clears throat> The idea for this exercise actually came about because of an article written by one of our master's students, Andrew Evans. Um, Andrew was being supervised by myself at the time on his master's degree. And he wrote an article related to the degree on um, safeguarding concerns, deterring young people's access to condoms. You can um, easily get this article if you want to read it, and I've put the full reference down below on your learning resource as well. But here's what you have to think of. Now remember I said I would have normally had groups to split into two, so that one side of the room would think of um, one set of reasons and rationale, and the opposite side of the group, uh, group would have thought the others. So you're going to have to do it all. Now imagine that the trust or the employer that you've got has got um, a free online resource for young people, say between the ages of 16 to 14, to sign on to this online resource and to be able to order free chlamydia testing kits. Okay, so you're working for an organisation where your employer is doing that. And now what the employer has done is to ask you to be part of a team to think of some more ideas about what you can do with this website. So instead of just sending out free chlamydia testing kits, the employer or the trust now want to look at whether they should be sending out free condoms as well. So that might be sending out free condoms with the chlamydia testing kits. Or then you might consider, well, if people are asking for chlamydia testing kits, that probably means they've had condomless sex in the first place. So wouldn't it be better to send out condoms before they have condomless sex and hopefully prevent them getting chlamydia or any other unintended consequences of condomless sex? OK, so your employer wants you to be part of this team to discuss this. Should they be providing condoms to young people via this online resource? So what I want you to do is to think about the reasons for and against that. OK, and one way of doing that is to consider something called a force field analysis. And that means you're looking at restraining forces and facilitating forces, things that will hinder you and things that will help you um, achieve your goal. So if you had a sheet of paper, for example, and you wrote your aim in the middle of the paper, and I've written it down here, your aim is to explore the possibilities of providing condoms with an online chlamydia testing service to young people. So first of all, start thinking about all the restraining forces, all the, um, the reasons, the arguments, the rationale that may be given for not providing condoms with this chlamydia testing service. So think of all the, all the reasons against you achieving this aim. And then once you've done that, so if you've got a sheet of paper, you might write the aim in the middle and then draw an arrow coming in from one direction and that's all your restraining forces. Try to think of as many reasons as possible why this initiative should not happen. 
Once you've done that, flip it over then and try to think about all the ways in which this should happen. So the reasons, the arguments, the rationale, the evidence-based practice, all the reasons why you should be doing this. Okay? And um, I'll pause the video here so that you can stop and actually think about this. All right. And hopefully you'll be writing down some of your ideas so that you will be able to share them with us. OK, thanks.